What if Stephen Hawking had unlimited time? Humankind has always been enchanted by the wonders of the universe. The stars and planets, distant moons, and the great mysteries presented to us from beyond the ether. But few have been able to capture and bring the cosmos to the masses like renowned author, scientist, and all-round genius, Professor Stephen Hawking. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, what if Stephen Hawking had unlimited time? Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more fascinating content. In his life, Hawking had been defying medical professionals for decades before his death in 2018, aged 76. When he was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, also known as motor neurone disease and Lou Gehrig's disease at just 21, doctors only gave him two years to live. Of course, that was in 1963, and everybody knows that that diagnosis simply didn't stop him. Looking at what he accomplished in his lifetime, his living on infinitely would have gifted the world with an incomprehensible amount of knowledge. In fact, when discussing with The Guardian his baffling longevity in 2011, Hawking said, I have lived with the prospect of an early death for the last 49 years. I'm not afraid of death, but I'm in no hurry to die. I have so much I want to do first. Perhaps surprisingly, Hawking was a pretty rebellious student at school and university. He didn't study much and considered himself a difficult student, though it was obvious to most of his tutors that they had a genius in their midst. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, he made a name for himself in science and academia, especially with his early work on black holes. It was in 1974 when he first theorized that black holes emit radiation. This discovery directly disagreed with Einstein's early theories that absolutely nothing can escape a black hole, not even light. While it's true that light can't escape a black hole, Hawking suggested that black holes emit radiation in the form of leaked energy, and this energy would eventually lead to them closing up and disappearing. It was named Hawking radiation, and its existence remains contested in physics today. Perhaps if he'd had more time on Earth, he'd have eventually been able to help prove, or at least see proven, Hawking radiation. His work on black holes goes deeper than that, though, as Hawking also came up with theories about singularities. Singularities are points of infinite density at the heart of a black hole. Of course, we can't see into a black hole, but if we could, Hawking suggests what we would see is a long funnel eventually leading to this singularity, where all the matter the black hole absorbs is crushed. He even said himself that he hoped he'd be remembered most for his seminal work on black holes, so it would have certainly been something to see him continue to unravel the universe's biggest mystery. All of these papers were published in the 70s, but remarkably, Hawking didn't hit the mainstream until 1988, when he published A Brief History of Time. It wasn't his first book, but in a lot of ways, it was his most important, establishing his idea that science should be for everyone and not just an elite group of academics. Hawking wanted a book on the inner workings of our universe which catered to everybody, and wasn't full of convoluted jargon and ideas you'd need a degree in theoretical physics to understand. This is why A Brief History of Time became a worldwide hit, staying on the Sunday Times bestseller list for five years. Following this success, Hawking continued to write about cosmology in an accessible way, and 30 years later, in 2018, his final popular book, Brief Answers to the Big Questions, was published posthumously. It brought the wonders of space to the masses again, inspiring the kind of widespread interest beyond our own planet that Hawking became known for. In an alternate world where the man miraculously lived forever, he'd surely have continued to write more engaging, best-selling, and inspiring books. We believe that life arose spontaneously on Earth. So in an infinite universe, there must be other occurrences of life. On the topic of alternate worlds, that was another theory he significantly contributed to, the multiverse. Hawking actually had two different multiverse ideas, revising his own initial theories in a paper published in collaboration with Thomas Hertog only weeks before his death. Hawking had scrutinized the Big Bang theory for most of his life, as well as the theory of cosmic inflation, which solves what's commonly called the horizon problem in physics. The idea that light doesn't travel fast enough to have reached all the points of the observable universe. His old multiverse theory spoke of unique pocket universes separated by an inflating expanse. But his and Hertog's new multiverse theory appeared much less liberal in terms of what these pockets could look like, limiting every possibility to Einstein's uniform laws of physics. A radically new theory formed so close to the time of his passing, 
With unlimited time, Hawking could have developed it further and, ultimately, someday, given us definitive evidence of the multiverse. It wasn't just space that Hawking sought to conquer, though. It was also time. Back in 1983, he and James Hartle suggested that, were time travel possible, we'd never be able to go as far back as to witness the actual dawning of the universe. The pair said that we could never see the beginning of time because, at the beginning of everything, there was only space and no time at all. In fact, for Hawking, the entire concept of the beginning of the universe is meaningless. While going back to the very start of existence is impossible, Hawking did believe that time travel might not be entirely science fiction. He mused that traveling back in time could be possible and famously once held a party for time travelers, in which the invitations weren't sent out until after the party was over. Unfortunately, nobody showed up, but that could have been because any genuine time traveler would have certainly blown their cover if they'd attended a party specifically for time travelers, held by one of the most famous people on the planet. Or maybe people in the future are just plain rude. Regardless, Hawking believed in time travel to an extent because of M-theory, which was a topic in one of his other books, The Grand Design. M-theory says that there might actually be 11 hidden dimensions in the universe, as opposed to the four dimensions we generally believe in. The idea is that by somehow utilizing these dimensions, traveling back in time might be possible. There's no doubt that Hawking is best remembered for his contributions to science and theories on the universe, but he didn't spend all of his time looking at the stars. He was also a tireless campaigner on a number of issues. Given another opportunity, he'd have continued to raise awareness for people with all kinds of disabilities, not just ALS, aiming to make the world a more knowledgeable and inclusive place for disabled individuals. He was also a vocal commentator on climate change and the danger it poses, continually listing global warming as one of the major threats against humanity. His environmental activism even led him to theorize that mankind would ultimately destroy itself by the year 2600, after it uses so much energy that the Earth turns into a ball of fire. This belief wasn't all doom and gloom, as he did think that humans could be saved via interplanetary expansion, moving out into space and beyond and colonizing other worlds. Clearly, Hawking could have continued to provide insight and advice, as well as dire warnings, about the environmental impact of climate change had he been given more time. As a man with so much knowledge and as a respected voice all over the world, he likely would have even led the charge to change human behavior for the better. Hawking's achievements and contributions to science and culture were widely recognized during his lifetime as well as now after his death. His early discovery of Hawking radiation led to him being elected into the Royal Society of London as one of their youngest ever fellows in 1974. Elizabeth II awarded him a CBE in 1982 before the release of A Brief History of Time. Though nearly a decade after its publication, he reportedly turned down a knighthood in protest over the British government's poor science funding. Elsewhere, he even received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama, among many dozens more accolades. Were Hawking still with us, he'd have surely gone on to be even more decorated, continuing as one of the most honored individuals in world history, and perhaps even collecting that knighthood if the British government finally made STEM education more of a priority. Ultimately, this great genius had no fear of dying, and already lived for five decades longer than the best doctors thought he would do, for which the world will always be grateful. I didn't do my scientific work in the hope of winning prizes and medals. I did it because I wanted to understand the universe. His thoughts, theories, and papers continue to provide a basis for centuries more scientific progress. And that's what would happen if Stephen Hawking had unlimited time. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.